going to bring this meeting to order. Good evening. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Commissioner's meeting. This is a public meeting that is being aired live on our local cable television station, QAC-TV7. These media broadcasts provide county citizens an opportunity to watch and review our scheduled public meetings. In addition to our live audience this evening, we are providing remote options for citizens to watch and participate in county commissioner meetings. Citizens may watch our meeting live on our website at qac.org live or on our television channel, Breezeline Channel 7 and High Definition Channel 507. Citizens may also participate by joining the live Zoom meeting by going to qac.org slash public comment. Citizens may also email comments to public comment at qac.org. All comments received will be summarized during the press and public comment period on tonight's agenda. We acknowledge everyone's participation and by attending you acknowledge that this session is both recorded and aired. Press and public comment will be taken and is limited to three minutes per person. If you do care to speak, please sign up at the information table out in the lobby. Comments longer than three minutes can be submitted in writing for the commissioner's review. We will now stand and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Commission President Jim Moran. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you can remain standing for a moment of silence, in the, in the last two weeks we lost two county employees, Mark Seidel with Animal Services and Brian Hurd with Sanitary. Thank you very much. All right, Commissioners, that uh, brings us to the uh, approval of tonight's agenda. So your agenda for today's meeting, November 14th, along with the regular session minutes, the closed session minutes, and the Sanitary Commission minutes from the October 24th meeting have all been circulated for review. Do we have any additions or corrections? Motion to add one additional uh, action item on tonight's agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So motion to accept the agenda as amended and all the minutes as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second <laughs> on this item. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So move. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, that brings us to press and public comments. So we appreciate all citizens for taking time to express your views to the county commissioners. Comments are limited to three minutes per person. Comments longer than three minutes may be submitted in writing. This commission respects your desire and right to convey your message freely. When you come forward, please speak clearly at the standing microphone. State your name, your address, and your topic of interest. And in keeping with the dignity of our office, we ask that all views be expressed in a respectful and civil manner. Very good. Uh, first on the list is Joe Gannon. Good evening, commissioners, Mr. Mon, Ms. Margie, Joe Gannon from Churchill, Maryland. I understand there's a proposal in about putting a prison up right outside of Churchill, not only for Queen Anne's County, but also for two other counties. Uh, I really think there should be, hopefully there'll be a public hearing, information hearing about this to let people know, because there's quite a few people upset. You know, uh, you got a school close by there, everybody's worried about their property values going down, and nobody wants uh, murderers and rapists and child molesters in their back door. So please have a public hearing, let everybody know what's going on. I'm totally against it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hmm. Di Gwen Reno? Did I do that right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Di Quinn Reno, and I live on Main Street in Queenstown. My husband and I also own property on Bennett Point Road across from Greenwood Creek Nursery, just close to Route 18. We use the property for recreational pursuits and also have three feral cat colonies that live on our property. Our cats are living their best life on the property and is one of the reasons that I'm here. 
The concern I raise is the speed limit on Bennett Point Road. For the first mile and a half from Route 18 to Hemsley Road, it is 50 miles an hour. For the remaining six and a half miles south all the way to the end, it is 35 miles an hour. So we regularly experience vehicles that are far exceeding the 50 mile an hour speed limit past our property. It's a significant safety issue for us to pull out of our property, as it is for the residents of Y Harbor Drive and also the busy Greenwood Creek Nursery. We have lost three cats to being hit by vehicles, and while I can't say definitively it's due to speeding, slower traffic would certainly reduce the chances of future deaths. Additionally, the county promotes Bennett Point Road as a county bicycle route, the, Graceland flat the Graysonville Flatlands, of which I and many cyclists frequently ride. The 50 mile an hour section can be a bit stressful when you're riding a bike. Finally, there is a significant deer population on Bennett Point Road properties, and a reduction in speed would reduce the chance of any deer-involved car accidents. So I have a request and a question for the board. One, why is there a disparity in speed limits on Bennett Point Road? And please consider adjusting and maintaining a 35-mile-an-hour limit for the entirety of Bennett Point Road and enact a speed reduction program to enforce those limits. The speed reduction would add a mere 46 seconds to any driver journeying down that section of Bennett Point Road. So I appreciate your time this evening. I have a packet for each of you if I may approach and give that. It's a written copy of my statement, a map of Bennett Point Road with the speed limits noted, and then the county bike, bike map. So I look forward to your response. I have a copy for each of you. Hand it, Hand it, it over this way. Should we get them? Yes, sir. Thank you. So were you responsible for taking down all those signs? signs uh, uh, there's nailed to the trees so that's not on our property oh, okay so, and we would never nail the si signs to trees like that no. so our property is the ones that have the feral cat signs on it yes. if you've seen those that's our property on the right okay where our cats live mm -hmm. yeah dude i ride my bike down mm -hmm. <laughs>Good evening, commissioners. My name is Drew Turner. I'm with Douglas Development from Annapolis, Maryland, and I'm here to speak in regards to County Ordinance 2302, and specifically how it relates to our property located on Piney Narrows Road in Kent Narrows. Um, so this ordinance, if adopted, as you all know, would amend the code to allow for a lower percentage of commercial density at a mixed-use project, and also allow for up to 25 units per acre of bonus density of residential units per acre. So though I have not lived this project as long as my counterpart, Mr. Milstein, I've been deeply involved for the past two years. In my capacity, in this effort of shepherding this text amendment to where it is today, I've had the great opportunity of working with many different community groups and stakeholders um, in, this, in this community. This engagement started back in 2021, and I had countless meetings with the planning staff, Amy and Stephanie, which were always very productive meetings, constructive meetings, and though we may not have seen eye to eye on the exact content and numbers within this uh, text amendment, I think we all agreed that what is with currently within the code and the percentages that are currently there make new development very challenging today. In the handouts I just provided, you'll see that this amendment has received favorable support from several key stakeholder community groups we met and presented to both Queen Anne's County Economic Development Commission as well as the Kent Narrows Development Foundation in 2022 and 2023. Both of these meetings had meaningful dialogue from key stakeholders within close proximity to the property. And the key takeaway from all of those meetings was that everybody really wants to see something happen with this property. They all voted in support of this and that led us to bringing this before the Planning Commission. We met with the Planning Commission also on two separate occasions where we also received favorable support on this text amendment. At that time, what we presented and what was in that text amendment was a reduction down to 5% commercial use in the mixed use density as well as 25 units per acre. And what we have before you all, we've re-looked at it, we've gotten to 12%, so more than double what would have been supported by the community and by the Planning Department and 25 units per acre. What that gets to is around 300 units and roughly in just over 40,000 square feet of commercial density. So in closing, we think the record is clear that the community, your constituents, 
support this amendment. And they support this amendment because they want to see something happen with this property the same way we do. So here tonight, we request you to, to vote on this and support this, similar to your stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Milstein. Good evening, Commissioners. Paul Milstein, Douglas Development, Burtonsville, Maryland. They just get younger and better as time goes on, but that's the nature of the beast. So, so what, what I wanted to say was, um, and I appreciate the opportunity, um, you've got a handout coming around, and this handout represents what was previously approved um, in 2017 and 20. 19 during that process. What that is is for illustrative purposes. The intention here is to build a project of the same vernacular, very similar in context with the roof lines, architecture, etc., with a substantial reduction in size. So that before you represents close to 400 units and 116,000 feet of commercial. What we are here today with in this modified text amendment, because as you know, we were here a couple months ago recently and we heard there was concern about the 5% commercial and it just wasn't enough. So we went back to the drawing board because we do listen sometimes. You think we might not listen, but we do. And, and we really worked to, to drive that up. We are now at 12% commercial, which is over double digits. It nets out almost 46,000 feet of commercial space and about 300 units, about 307 units. So. Everybody wants to see something get done. Nobody wants to see the wrong thing get done. There's no point in rushing to a mistake. Certainly, I don't think anybody here will think anybody's rushed to anything. We've been working on this for years, and it's been challenging. Uh, I started with a dream with that man right there, and, 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 and that's a dangerous combination because both of us are dreamers, and what we came forward was just unachievable, and certainly the world has changed. With, the, with, with COVID, the commercial use you know, d demand today is substantially less. Our buildings are empty. We're having a very challenging time with both retail and office. That's just a fact. So we're looking for the right balance. We think what we've got here through the efforts of your commission, the planning board, the community input, Amy and her team, who has been extremely helpful in trying to get to something we can all compromise on, is we think we're there. We think we're there. It's a sweet spot. I ask you to please continue to work with us. Let us keep moving forward. Ultimately, this is a bonus, a discretionary bonus, that if you do grant it, we'll, we'll pay for it. It's part of the process. But at the same time, you will get the final say at water and sewer allocation. If we can get through planning board and concept approval and site plan approval and APF and all these other challenges, which are challenging, it still comes back for APF. And at that point, you can ultimately decide if the project before you is something you feel is worthy or not. But I, I ask that you please don't stop us now. We've come so far, it's been years to get to this point. Let us keep going. And that's what we need. If this, with, with the support of this text amendment, and we keep working with it, give us a chance to work with staff and the planning board and bring you something that you're happy with. And if you're not at that time, you have the ability to stop it through order and sewer. So I ask you to please hang in, and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Joe Stevens. Thank you, Commissioners. As you know, I represent Douglas Development and have since 2006, and I'm not going to belabor or reiterate what Paul and and Drew said, I just want to make a couple of additional points. Um, and probably the most important one I can make is, is that, if it wasn't clear, the ordinance does not allow more development on the site than what is currently allowed. It's a different technique, and that's all. So even when you say 25 units per acre, that acreage calculation with the required commercial component all the way up to 12% now will only permit around 300, maybe a little less units on the site. It's already been received concept plan and APF approval for 400 units as apartments above commercial. So it's a design technique. Um, it's about 25% less intense than what had been approved. And that was the first point. And then the second point I want to make, and last point, is, is that since 2006 I've been working with Douglas Development. In 2009-89, after the first Kent Narrows plan was adopted, they came in um, and they've got concept plan approval for that large number, maybe a little bit more at that point with hotels and so on and so forth. And um, they came back again when that didn't work as, they, as well as they wanted with the revised that, that was just handed out to you, was approved by the Planning Commission as concept plan in 2019. Never his, has the planning staff, a planning commission member, or anybody said, 
we'd like you to evaluate this. We'd like you to look at this. We'd like you to bring your architect back. Your land planner should do this. They have spared no expense. I mean, each one of those plans that went through concept plan approval, I'm sure Paul can tell you and look at the numbers, but I'm sure there were hundreds of thousands of dollars in planning. They don't skimp. They'll do what's requested of them, if at all possible. And like Paul said, they want the opportunity. You don't have to approve sewer and water if you think the Planning Commission makes a mistake if they do grant the density bonus and we get back before you um, and we're fortunate enough to be here in a year or so. But give us that opportunity. There is nothing lost. It's less dense. You have nothing to lose. There's only something to gain, and that's the redevelopment of the property. Thank you. Brandon Kaufman. Brandon, I'm with Kaufman Concepts in Queenstown. Um, the 18-166 has required 60% of the trees to remain on this suburban commercial property. Um, an amendment was made to this to change it back to 40% around 19 months ago. And planning and zoning agreed that 60% is too restrictive and it should be 40%. However, they wanted to add some of their own stipulations and you know rules on top of that. Um, Additionally, the code that is in there now does not define what woodland is. They just define it as anything that covers the ground. So for instance, vines, you know, bushes, sticker bushes, all those things that make the woods unusable and those are not allowed to be cut without using that 60% of the property. Um, additionally to that, we bought this property at 306 Lake Drive, right by the college. Uh, it's 26 acres. We bought it as a nursery. It was performing as a nursery. And we have not heard back from the Planning Commission. We've heard that we are, and we've heard that we are not considered a nursery by the Planning Department. So that does not allow us to have an occupant. So I would like to know where we stand with that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. David Kaufman. Thank you, commissioners. My name is Dave Kaufman, and I'm also with Kaufman Concepts. And um, the county code, 18.166, severely limits our property. We started this project. We hired Davis and Bowden Fidel to do a site plan for us, and it was 40% coverage of trees. As we get through the process, we now understand that 60% of the property has to be covered in trees. You know, that's much more extensive than the state FCA requirements, which is 40%. Um, there was a text amendment introduced about 19 months ago. I think the commissioners agreed on that it was too restrictive. And at that time, uh, they asked planning and zoning to take a look at it to see if they thought it was too restrictive. They also thought it was, but wanted to be able to rewrite the text amendment in a way that was a little bit more favorable to them. To date, they still have yet to write it. It's been 19 months. I believe that our property is the only SC property in the entire county that's affected by this project or by this bill. And what we like you to do is vote on it. I mean, you guys know all about it. It's been in the pipeline for 19 months. I think it's time that somebody makes a vote. And um, I think you guys are OK to vote. I don't think there's any public hearings required at this time. And if planning and zoning wants to come back at a later date and have revised the plan, let them come back. But let's not just hold us up forever. We don't even know whether we can remove a tree. We got trees sold, but we don't know if we can remove one because we don't know if we're a nursery or not a nursery. And we're just sitting here in limbo. So we encourage you guys to make a vote, and move, move it off the table. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And Eason? Hi, I'm Ken Eaton, uh, Damson Town Road, Queen Anne, Maryland. I'm also a design professional with Davis, Bone, and Fidel. We've been working with Kaufman Concepts on the property that they have. I, I did an exhibit, and I'll, I'll pass it out as soon as I get done here, but basically I outlined what could happen under the Forest Conservation Act requirements of Maryland, and then what additional we would have to retain under the Queen Anne's County Woodlands provision in the code. 
And, and basically, he has to, on this particular piece of property, he has to retain five more acres of trees over and above what the Maryland Forest Conservation Act requires. That amounts to about a 25% increase in trees that he has to keep and can't disturb to do this project. So I've been doing this a long time. I've been working in this field for 38 years. And I haven't seen anything quite like this in any other counties. We work across the bridge and all the way down to Norfolk. So uh, I would like you to consider the text amendment that was put before you 18 or 19 months ago and bump this back to what the State Forest Conservation Act requirements are, which seems to be pretty common. I've talked to a lot of forest conservation professionals, arborists, tree people, other design professionals, and uh, it's just, it seems very restrictive. If I could give these to you. Color coded so you can kind of tell what's going on there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jay Kilby. Hello, my name is BJ Kilby and I'm with uh, Exit Realty. So I'd like to talk about the same thing as Kaufman's. Um, I feel that the state of Maryland is um, goes over and above with their environmental regulation and it was really disheartening to find that Queen Anne's County was even going above that at a point in time. It, it doesn't feel like we're doing anything for the environment. It feels like they're using zoning as a weapon to stop development. And um, being that I sell commercial real estate, uh, I hear it from everybody. So when I heard it from somebody so close, I was like, I, I got to come up here and, and voice my opinion. So would you guys please consider voting on this text amendment? Thank you. Thank you. That's all we had who signed up. Would anybody else like to speak? Seeing none, we'll close press and public comment. All right, commissioners, we can move into the uh, presentations portion of the agenda for this evening. Uh, just note that our first proclamation, um, we we're, we're going to skip that and reschedule that for uh, probably the next meeting for Mr. Dan Tabler. He wasn't feeling well this evening, so he will not be able to attend. So then we can move on to the second presentation. Uh, we have character counts. They're here this evening. So uh, tab number six is uh, our presentation section in the book. This is item two. We have the uh, Queen Anne's County character counts spotlight for this month and a proclamation uh, for the 23rd anniversary of character counts. So we have um, Melinda Ray here. So the floor is yours, Melinda. Here we go. Good evening. Good evening. Would you like to go first or would you like Phil to go first? Just for uh, just a quick moment. Um, first of all, thank all of you for supporting Character Counts Initiative in Queen Anne's County. Some of you have been with us a long time, <laughs> aren't you? Um, I also want to thank our co-chair, Susan Coppage, and the members of our Character Counts Advisory Council and all of the coaches that we've had over the years. It's um, this spring, actually, the start of the initiative, the ideas that came about will, will be 25 years this spring. Uh, the community came together after a terrible tragedy in Colorado and we're searching for some ideas that would perhaps help our community to prevent or certainly uh, try to do something to keep something like that from happening here. And um, it's been it's been an adventure. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> yeah. And I do thank those of you that have been coaches or are coaches. And I know that you probably uh, have felt the experience and what it has meant to you. And it's hard to tell how many children that have and you know, come to that point in the road, should I turn right or do I go wrong? And maybe something that was said in the classroom or with one of the presentations with the children um, made a difference. And uh, I know we've had children that have been through the program because we've been so long at it that have said that it's made an impact on their life. And uh, again, thank you for taking the time. I know it is, it is valuable time that you have here. But uh, I believe the community thanks you as well as the advisory council as well as myself. 
Todd, congratulations on your room being named after you. <laughs> Good character over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very uh, much. But at this time, I'd like to have uh, Mindy take over and go through a few things. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm excited just to be in this position um, since April um, and to be able to be a part of the 23rd anniversary of Character Counts. Um, I definitely want to thank the commissioners for their continued support. Um, it's kind of cool that it's been going for 23 years. Um, I currently have coaches, volunteer coaches, who received character counts when they were in elementary school, which is such a neat kind of full circle moment. Um, I think that's pretty neat. Um, we also want to thank the people of Queen Anne's County for supporting us, our business partners um, and other nonprofits um, that support our mission. We need to acknowledge the Queen Anne's County Board of Education, the school principals, the counselors, and the incredible teachers that allow our volunteers in their classrooms um, routinely. Um, there are also a lot of people behind the scenes that continue to make this initiative run. Um, Wayne Humphreys um, and Susan Coppage are current um, advisory um, co-chairs. Um, all of our current and past advisory board council members, um, the former coordinators who held my position before me, Kelly Huber, Chris Perkins, Jackie um, Carter, and Elaine Butler. Um, and finally, a huge thank you to all the volunteers who have um, helped make this initiative such a success. Um, going through the office, we recently had a remodel at our building too, and so I had to go through all the files and everything. When I came across information, and I, I did some <clears throat> calculations, in the 23 years that Character Counts has been a part of this county, we have had over 1,200 volunteers, and they've delivered over 100,000 character education experiences for our students. That's just incredible to me. Um, it is also the time for me to give our, my update, um, my quarterly update to you guys. So I'm happy to report that we had over 60 new volunteers trained this year. That puts us at over 100 volunteers just this year alone, which is amazing. Um, and we're able to pair a character counts coach with 99.9% .9 of our K through five classrooms. Um, we are in 155 of the 156 K through five classrooms. And by Thanksgiving, we'll be in that last one. I'm certain of it. Um, we have 37 businesses, nonprofits, or organizations that have signed up to be businesses of character with us, and that is still moving strong. I got another one just this morning. So um, we're moving right along, and we've got some really cool things coming up in the horizon, some new ideas that, that we want to promote. So thank you. Awesome. Well, Phil, which one? Yeah, so, um, so I was a character accounts coach with, um, at the time, Commissioner Steve Aarons. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the lessons that he taught, that we taught at, uh, at Mattapique to the ninth graders, probably kept a lot of them out of politics. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of, I mean, it's a great deal of satisfaction. If there's any of the folks that are watching this tonight are going to watch it later. And then you're on the fence about being um, a character's counts coach. Uh, the experience is truly amazing to be with those kids. And we've had... I mean, if you decide you want to be a character's counts coach, you're going to be <coughs> lumped in with a, a group of some pretty amazing people in the past that have done it. Um, and We're I know that Becky it. Carter was the one that, that got us involved in it, and, and, um, and she was very inspirational and could be persuasive. <laughs> she always seemed to have something on everybody. <laughs> if anybody needs help besides the kids, you do. So... Um, I didn't we, find we, that file in the office. <laughs> Hopefully it got thrown away. <laughs> anyway, I do have the privilege um, of, of reading the proclamation. Uh, I have three kids that uh, went through Queen Anne's County School System and, and uh, were involved in those, those moments in the classroom with our Characters Counts coaches. And I'd like to think that I had a little bit of, of, of the reason why they turned out to be pretty good kids, but I'm sure the Characters Counts coaches... Had some, what? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Just go ahead and read. <clears throat> Thank God for Tammy. <laughs> Proclamation 23-52. Whereas more than two decades ago, the people of Queen Anne's County initially recognized the importance of positive character traits in the people and encouraged one another to incorporate these values into their daily lives. And whereas in 2000, the Queen Anne's County Commissioners officially endorsed the six pillars of character and declared Queen Anne's County a character counts community. And whereas character counts encourages all citizens, corporate and individuals, to incorporate the model and invaluable traits of the six pillars, which are trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship, and an ongoing commitment to promote character development 
and ethical behavior in our community. Character Counts has been fortunate in the building a great partnership with Queen Anne's County Public School Systems and has facilitated over 100,000 character education experiences to children delivered by over 1,500 volunteers, coaches, and mentors. And whereas local business organizations and nonprofits have participated in the Character Counts Initiative as businesses of character, providing volunteers and financial support and assisting with spreading the message of good character. And whereas through Character Counts, our community has been and will continue to promote the goals of Queen Anne's County's Character Counts Advisory Council, strengthen personal traits of character, build families of character, and create more cohesive community of character. Now, therefore, the Queen Anne's County Commissioners and Board of County Commissioners do hereby recognize and invite our citizens to celebrate 23 successful years and an anniversary of character counts uh, here in Queen Anne's County, signed by the commissioners. You have been here a lot, a lot of those years, buddy. <laughs> so thank you for your commitment. And our business of character. That's our spotlight. So yes. we have two, two honorees yes. this month. Yes. We're very yes, excited. I have two. What you do? Because I drew the long straw. That's exactly right. <laughs> character Counts Pillar celebrated in November is citizenship. Being a good citizen means doing your part to make your home, school, and community better. This can include voting, being a good neighbor, and making choices to protect the safety of, and rights of others. The month we have... This month, we have two honorees that have distinguished themselves and deserve to be recognized. Is there a reason why George is here tonight? Maybe. First, Queen Anne's County Television. The dedicated staff at QAC TV worked tirelessly to make sure citizens stay informed about happenings in our community, including their broadcasts of county board of education and commissioner meetings. You will often see them throughout the county promoting local nonprofits, small businesses, and local fundraising <laughs> events. This organization foundation is built on the pillars of character, and we thank them. So a big round of applause for our <laughs> When Bruce interviews you, he always wants to know what your favorite cookie is. I want you to know that I've incorporated that into my daily activities, including with clients. Eating cookies? No, asking oh, what their favorite cookie is. Oh, okay. um, we also want to recognize the Queen Anne's County Veteran and Military Support Alliance. Um, they were launched in 2022 to address the unique needs of servicemen and women. They strive to provide financial counseling, holistic therapies and healing services, guidance to government and private sector assistance, and peer support to active military veterans and their families. They believe the sacrifice of our military and veteran families entitles them to live in communities that value them, invest in them, and understand the unique cultural environment and the battleground experiences they share in service to their country. We agree and thank them for their dedication and service. Um, and then just a public announcement. If you uh, believe that there's somebody that needs to be honored um, as a business of character or a spotlight business of character or a nonprofit in our community, you can reach out to www.peopleforcharacter.org and make your nominations. Yeah. So once again, thank you very much. If I could just take one second again for the cable, uh, Queen Anne's County. Uh, they were really responsible for being able to keep our momentum going during the shutdown. It was they did an incredible job in promoting and keeping uh, the teachers and the students connected through many of their activities for us, and we thank you very much for that. Thanks thank again. You. Thanks. <clears throat> thank you both. This is a kid at heart. <clears throat> Always, forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next presenter is uh, Ms. Kathy Willis, the Director of the Department of Community Services. She has her departmental update and also a proclamation for National Caregivers Month. So, Kathy, if you want to come on up with your team. 
Uh, this is uh, in your books under tab 6, item 3, pages 4 through 13, and it's also on the uh, overhead screen. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you for having us here tonight for our update for the Department of Community Services. I'd like to recognize to my right my Chief of Aging and Transportation, Ann Sparks, and my left my Chief of Housing and Family Services, Mike Clark. And I have a few other supervisors in, in the audience. I have Ann Van Den Schoten, Stephen Palmer, and Stacy Voorhees. Um, and they are all the reason we're here, and we're just missing a an integral part of this actual presentation was my fiscal administrator, Michelle Marshall, who, who I have learned can put the together for me very well and uh, helps all of us in these endeavors. So with no further ado, we're going to go to the events of 2023 that we're going to review, some of which we were very fortunate to have return. Um, to service since prior to the uh, pandemic shutdown. So I'll go through each one and explain just a little bit. Uh, two excellent events returned to our department, one of which being the 18th Annual Senior Summit, which was the first time it has been held since May of 2019. We were a little worried. Were we going to bring in the crowd? Were we going to have a lot of people and a lot of vendors? Well, we had over 400 visitors enter the 4-H park grounds that day to participate. Um, everyone had a jazzy time with a Mardi Gras theme, and that included food, vendors, dancing, prizes, giveaways, entertainment, classic cars, crafts, and games. We are already planning for next year's event on May 17th, 2024, and it is going to be welcome to the 60s. So look <laughs> out the, for some, Welcome to the 60s will be the mm -hmm. thing. Look, look out for some exciting spirit week, I'm sure, <laughs> that will happen leading up to that. Here you go, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> also returning this year, we had the Commission on Aging Town Hall meeting, which we appreciate uh, Commissioner Moran for volunteering for the panel for us once again after a four-year break from this, um, sponsored by the Commission on Aging, we had a total of 78 attendees and eight panelists and 10 staff persons. Um, and that was held at the Graysonville Senior Center. So this, the senior population and the Commission on Aging was very pleased to have this event back. Next, uh, one of our largest accomplishments of this year has been the opening of the QA, QAC YMCA and Active Aging Center. And so far, so good. Um, they opened a month ago. We already have, actually we have probably a few more than when we did this presentation, 124 new members. It might be a little bit more by now. Um, the YMCA itself has received 1,400 new individual memberships and have had a total of over 14,000 visits in the first month. So programs are, are tailored to ages 55 plus in the Active Aging Center. And of course, they're availed to any other programs if they become a member of the Y. But the important point, point to remember is that for the 55 plus, there is no membership fee. Um, we have certain programs that are just like the other senior centers that you may come and avail yourself of without having the membership to the actual Y. So be sure to check it out. It's very exciting. And Congregate Meals actually started there, actually started today. We served eight Congregate Meals, and we already have 16 signed up for next Tuesday for the special Thanksgiving dinner. So uh, we'll see how all that goes. But um, it's been very exciting. Todd and I and all of you participated in the, the ribbon cutting and um, the the senior population as well as the population across Queen Anne's County and from some other counties are very excited to have this facility. Oops, I went too far. Um, how did I do that? Sorry, I went the wrong way. Anyway, 
Um, and then the weekend before last, um, Mike's program had the Make a Difference Day that was the ninth annual one on November 4th at Southersville Middle School. They had 75 families totaling 127 participants who attended this event. Um, 54 vendors supplied resources and information and 183 people, community members, were serviced by the food bank. Highlights of the event were dental services that were provided on site, health care and wellness, haircuts, housing assistance and shelter, legal services, and much more. That was a very successful event, um, and they are looking forward to continuing that as an annual event as well. Now I can go to Ride for Free in 23. Thank you all very much. We did ride for free. <clears throat> Look at that chart. You know, we started out, it spiked a little bit, it slowed down a little bit for the summer, and then we are soaring um, since then. So we are planning to do this again. Um, we have a new formula based from MTA that's going to be based on actual ridership. I have been with this department for many, many, many years, and for at least the last 20 years, the grant funding has not budged for any of transportation services. We've received new, new grant funding, but when we received that new grant funding, which put us into a large urban area, due to the fact that we are clumped in with the Baltimore metropolitan region when you hit Graysonville South, they reduced my other grant in order to give us the grant for the large urban. So it was kind of a wash. So we're excited <clears throat> that new funding will be based on ridership. This is, this is a big step in the right direction, finally. With our ridership going up, that already means we have a positive number. Will we get the funding? That's the million dollar question. However, it is, it is a positive approach for the future in transportation. Um, up next for 2023, we have this Friday, the Maryland Access Point Caregivers Con Conference, which is titled Embracing the Caregiver. That will be held at Graysonville Senior Center this Friday from nine to two. And we have a proclamation for that, which we can do at the end of the presentation, if that's okay. Also planning for the Holiday Senior Gala, which will be December 8th at Ken Island Senior Center. And we must thank you, um, as, as usual, that you have provided for the cost of this to be free to all participants. We are currently sold out with having 100 people in attendance. There is a waiting list, and we're trying to figure out how to squeeze in a few more seats in the Kent Island Senior Center to accommodate everyone. Um, we got room. We got room. We got room. How many, how many it's just the fire marshal. Yeah, but we'll we get got past the, We'll open up a couple of them that. doors and slide them down the hallway a, day, a little bit. We're going to give fire marshal the day off that day. <laughs> right, right. You do employ him, so. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, and we appreciate again your support of that. It makes it, it makes over a hundred people come out quickly for that. It's a very nice event, and we're excited to have you DJing this year, I believe. I didn't get asked yet, but is this the official yes, ask? Put him on the spot. Go ahead, Jack. Say no. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, oh, wait, Jack said yes. I mean, I have it on my calendar to be there. So, I mean, but, <laughs> So who's going to be Santa? You need to talk to Stacy then. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh huh. All right. Oh, good. I'm confirmed then. <laughs> oh, good. I enjoy it. So. I knew it would be. I got to get a new hat now, though. <laughs> <laughs> you can't um, wear the patriotic. We need a Christmas hat. I got my Christmas hat. Okay. I'm gonna get a new one now. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Um. So looking forward to 2024, um, we will have the 19th annual Senior Summit. In no, it's we it'll be the 20th, Why? won't it? Anyway, May of 2024. Um, we're excited to hopefully have the completion of the Kramer Center renovations. Which, if you get a chance, please stop by. It has done a complete and total transformation from the original 1991 Paisley pink 
and mauve and blue, very thick wallpaper that has held up tremendously well, but is now gone. And um, it has, it's been a great transformation. The Department of Public Works has been wonderful working with us to keep all the contractors moving along. Our staff has put up with a lot, having to move and work as a group in the main dining room. And hopefully we'll be moving back into phase three and have one more phase four to finish. So um, that's that's been a long time coming. It's been a capital budget item that has, I think, started a while ago and, you know, emergencies come and go. So we're, we're very appreciative of that. Um, we will also have another caregivers conference in Nove November of 2024 and the Make a Difference Day again in November of 2024. And planning for the holiday gala again. Um, and you can wear the same hat next year. So December of 2024. Those are our updates. Um, short and sweet. And we have a proclamation in honor of National Family Caregivers Month, which... Yes, you do. Proclamation 23-48. Whereas over 50 million Americans today are, are family caregivers for their loved ones, providing crucial care and medical assistance to parents, children, siblings, <coughs> and other loved ones, ensuring their health and dignity. dignity. And whereas a large number of them are finding themselves providing care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas caregiving can be rewarding experience, can be an rewarding, rewarding experience, it is not without its consequences such as stress, poor health, and caregiver burnout. And whereas family caregivers juggle everyday life tasks such as preparing the children for school, managing household responsibilities, and working full-time or part-time jobs. In addition, they have, they have the added responsibility of managing medications for their loved ones. Whether it be for a senior with Alzheimer's or a child with special needs, the required attention can be nonstop. And whereas making time for yourself and the family protects the, a family caregiver's own health, strengthens, strengthens family's relationships, prevents burnout, and can enable a care recipient to stay at home longer. The chance to take a breather and re-energize is vital in order for you to be as good a caregiver tomorrow as you were today. And whereas the responsibility of family caregivers in our country is growing every year, it is even, it, it is even more essential to encourage these heroes to take some time for respite, attend our, our, our local caregivers meetings and the caregivers conference on November 7th, 2023, and continue to contact, contract the Queen Anne's County Area Agency on Aging for additional resources. And now, therefore, we, the county commissioners of Queen Anne's County, do hereby recognize November 2023 as National Caregivers Month with the theme Caregivers Connect. Signed, the Queen Anne's County Commissioners. I thought that was Stevie Wilson. Trust us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you yes. very much. Andy, did you write that? Thank you, and we'll see you on the 8th. Yes, you will. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Hats on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mike, thanks for all your help. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, moving on, uh, our next presentation is actually the informational meeting for the upcoming comprehensive water and sewerage plan uh, public hearing, which is scheduled for two weeks from tonight. It is uh, the memorandums under tab number seven, item one. Uh, Mr. Alan Quimby, the Director of Public Works, is here this evening to uh, present these along with representatives from the Town of Centerville. So the first one is um, the Town of Centerville's proposal to expand their wastewater treatment plant here in uh, downtown Centerville. Okay, as Todd indicated, there was two amendment requests. One of them is in-house. The, the first one was from the town of Centerville, seeking to expand their wastewater treatment capacity from 542,000 gallons to 1 million gallons a day. Um, obviously, there's a, quite a few hurdles they have to jump through, but this is the first hurdle. Until you give them permission to do so in the water and sewer plan, they really can't proceed any further. So you, there's, I see plenty of representatives from the town. Should you have any questions? 
Yeah. Come on up, folks, if you want. We have uh, Councilman uh, Dan Wirth, um, Carolyn Brinkley, and I'm sorry. Janiel Turner. Janiel Turner. Thank you. We can start with giving just a little background. That was like kind of the quick and dirty, but we appreciate that. Thank you guys for having us today. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, as stated, we are here requesting an amendment to the county's comprehensive water and sewer plan to increase the capacity of the town of Centerville's wastewater treatment plant and for discussion on year-round surface water discharge to the Corsica River. The importance of the town's alignment with the county growth uh, management strategy, infill development, business development, and mixed commercial use contributions is a large factor for this request. As state and county plans both drive development toward existing infrastructure. It is imperative that the town be prepared to meet both current and future growth plans and system quality demands. As it stands, the current capacity of the wastewater treatment plant, as mentioned, is currently 0.542 MGD or million gallons per day, and we are requesting an increase of 0.458 MGD for a total capacity of one MGD. This will afford us the opportunity to extend services to growth areas both within town limits and address ongoing issues that have developed outside of town limits. This request for an increase in plant capacity will require the town to, to increase our discharge capacity. We are currently discharging uh, to the water reuse farm through spray irrigation from April through November and to gravel run December through March. The town has been unsuccessful in its many years of searching for suitable lands to expand our groundwater discharge. We have begun discussions with MDE regarding year-round surface water discharge. We have also engaged the Corsica River Implementers Group and are currently on their agenda for the December meeting to present the town's current treatment and design options, discuss environmental effects, viability, and process of discharging to the Corsica River. You want to pick up from there? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Good evening. I'm David Nixon. I'm a wastewater treatment process engineer with Whitman Reckhart. I'm working with the, the town of Centerville for, for more than five years, um, trying to, to develop a, an expansion um, to the treatment process as well as a, an upgrade of the treatment process. And our current um, status is to, to meet the, the enhanced nutrient removal um, requirements um, at the, the, the treatment plant with the upgrade. Um, and so the, I mean, the town is proposing to manage the, the plant's um, exp expanded effluent flow by maximizing the existing spray irrigation fields in combination with the, the new uh, outfall that's looking to be extended out into the Corsica River bypassing the, the gravel run so there's more flow in that area. Uh, during the, the irrigation season, the current permitted flow uh, the 0.542 will continue to be applied to the fields, and the remainder would go to the Corsica River. Outside the irrigation period, uh, during December to March, all flows would need to go to the, the Corsica River uh, because you can't apply uh, spray irrigation during the, the winter months. Uh, the town is proposing to relocate the plant outfall um, out into the, the Corsica River, downstream of the Watson Road Bridge, uh, which is the, the point um, denoted in the, the EPA and MDE's total uh, maximum daily limit TMDL discharge um, requirements. Uh, if the town ever wants to expand the, the disposal capacity, it needs to extend past the, the Watson Road Bridge. Um, and so we, we need to be consistent with that requirement, and we would be with the upgraded and expanded wastewater treatment plan. Thank you. We're here to here mainly to have a discussion and um, you know, and you know, answer any questions either tonight or at the future um, public hearing. So, I'm just curious, what's the Corsica River Conservancy and those groups? What do they got to say about this? Especially for bracket water. Well, they're, they're part of the um, the implementation group that we've been so they, interfacing they, with for a couple of years now. So they're, they're all aware. in. No, no, no. We won't say that. Okay. <laughs> but we'll say 
that we are having open discussion right. with them. Um, we met with Mike D, I'm sorry, uh, Frank D, and he took what we said back to the group. So we have a formal meeting with them for December, so we'll get a little bit more feedback from them at that time. I guess the process, I mean, it sounds like you'd have to go to the state first with that, to the outfall for that. I mean, they have to give that their blessing before you move forward. Yes, it's all a part of that. And is that has that that hasn't started yet until we get through all this? Step one. Right. Yes. Right. We have, yeah. We, this has to happen before we can go to MD. Once we're the beginning so, of the process. Yes. Right. Right. We're not the end. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the beginning process. Right, exactly. Okay. Well, that's, I don't have any questions. Look forward to the hearing. Yeah. Honest, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It'll be good. All right. Well, if you come up with anything else, feel free to reach out to us in between now and then. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. All right. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Question. Sure. Yeah. The existing farm that you do spray irrigation, how much more do you need? How much additional that you said that you couldn't, you've tried for years to find more farmland. How much more do you need? And that really depends on the, the land itself, um, the location, whether it has wetlands uh, adjacent to it, um, where the, the water table is on that, that land. In a, in a good scenario of, of land uh, that, that's good for um, spray irrigation, we're going to need at least 300 acres. I haven't been able to find that be. What a lot of money. To, <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. Plus, right. Patrick, you're still not you're still not getting right. to the winter months issue. Right. You're still right. going to need the outfall into the course of because gravel runs not going to handle that money. It, so right. more expensive than adding on. It is. Yes. Yes. Definitely yes. yes. so. We we had originally allocated like three billion dollars for a farm, and it's not even possible to do that anymore. Four so. Times. Pretty good. 100 acre farm is 12 million. Right. It's a million dollars per mile for piping to run to the nearest farm that we got pricing for. And then you have to run the pumps right. continuously out to the, the farm, whatever the distance is. And again, it's hundreds of thousands of gallons every single day that you're if you, pumping. If you miles. had your outfall in the Corsico, do you still need the spray irrigation? Yes, we yeah. plan to, to keep that. And again, that, that's to also um, you know, use that um, in its current status so that we can send less to the, the Corsica. Um, to do the best combination of, of spray irrigation and stream outfall that, that's practical. Right. So you, you, your outfall will be designed to hold the entire capacity, but in the summer months, you're going to be splitting the capacity, so the outfall into the river is going to be a lot less than. Absolutely correct. Right. <clears throat> but you could technically put it all in the river. Well, in the in the winter, they will. That's the whole. Thing. I mean, year round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then someday, maybe sell that 300 acre farm to spray it on now to recoup yeah, some of that money. Better. What's that? Okay. Okay. Anything else? Mr. Director Meany. Spray. One thing I'd like to add, I mean, again, with the, the upgrade, I mean, the, the water quality that we've produced from the upgraded treatment plant will be of higher quality than the, the existing plant. Uh, far, you know, exceeding what would be required for a spray irrigation water quality. So, so could the state come back and tell you to do that? You still got the winter months. <laughs> you're, you're missing that, Patrick. You get, I get in it. In the winter, you get you got to put it somewhere, and it's not going to go into the spray irrigation field. So it's a moot point. To, what are those months? January to March. December to March. December to March. Correct. Right. Yeah, so I mean put it somewhere for those four months and the gravel runs not big enough to handle 
that load right now. So it's it's informational. Don't need anything yeah. on it right now. So, any Patrick, anything else? You good? Yeah. All right. Still got the wheels turned. <laughs> I can see them over there. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just flabbergasted about the twelve million dollars. Yeah. Want the farm for nothing? Or you'd have bought a farm when you moved over here now, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> is there, how is there a fluid compared to ours as far as? They're not ENR. But like you said, they will prove it. How much would you say? Spray irrigation versus true outfall is probably pretty mm -hmm. significant, right? I mean, what you can have in there. Uh. <laughs> More, Alan? A little, just 30 seconds, if you recall, you know, the Jim Moran Memorial Water Main. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 My, my Well, it's in service now. And, uh, water line? You pour my fountain. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> As we went through design, we had a little bit of a mission creep, so we, I didn't want to go into Shopping Center Road because we just paved it that summer, but the more we thought about it, we thought that the lesser of two evils was to get completely out of Main Street forever. So we made the turn which into Shopping Center, which means two more properties are now in the water service area. So that's all this amendment does, is adds those two properties. So how many aren't? How many are what? How many are not in the, in the water along that stretch? Every they're all in the service area. None of them have connected. Right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They're all in they the service area. Now. Yeah. Okay. They will so they're all W-2s, basically? Yes. They will be after these two. Weeks. After we do this, right. Okay. <clears throat> so is all this... Apartments that have already come past, they're all going to hook to this water. Correct. And Dinonato's apartments just next to Cult Classic will connect to it. Um, of course, the shopping center, which is on the agenda for later, well, they want to connect to it. And the um, Azar property across yes. yeah. that as well. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Okay. And again, we'll have a public hearing on both of these two projects at our next meeting at um, 5 50 p.m. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Quimby. All right, commissioners. Next, we have uh, two legislative items also under tab number seven. Uh, they're both related. First is county ordinance. Or excuse me. This is the first one is amendment one to county ordinance uh, 2302. And that is for the purpose of amending the pending County Ordinance 2302 to require less of a decrease in the amount of commercial square footage required as part of the mixed use development uh, to and to clarify that no individual parcel or lot may be used for solely residential purposes. This is the uh, text amendment for uh, the, the Jamal property in the Kenton Arrows. So this would um, increase the original text amendment from 5% commercial to 12% commercial on that property. So this can be um, uh, introduced and voted on if um, if the board is willing is wishes to do so, and then we have behind that county ordinance twenty three hundred two itself, which would then have to be uh, uh, voted on as amended by uh, this amendment one to that ordinance. So do I have a motion for the amendment? Hearing none, do I have a motion for the ordinance? 2302. No motion. Okay. So I guess my question is, do we need to vote up or down, or can we just not have a motion and let it ride? Um, you can go either way. I mean, amendment. Uh, I, the the ordinance was amended um, to increase the uh, the commercial component to, from five percent to twelve percent. Uh, so I assume if that's not going to move forward, you probably would. Well, you certainly can vote on the twenty three hundred two. As presented originally, which we haven't, we don't have a motion on either. We don't either. have a motion on either one. So, yeah. so 
Can we let it lie like that? Is, is that Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I think that uh, if you don't vote it down, it's still there, right? That's right. Okay. So I'll ask one more time. Any motions? Anybody want to make a motion on the uh, amendment? Would be yeah, introduced and then voted on. Correct. Would be the yeah, process. Motion to introduce it, then amend it. That's true. Yeah. And then anybody with a motion on the original bill as it was written? All right, saying none, we'll move on. Okay. Are we staying under legislative? Yes, we yeah. are. We are in legislative. Yeah, that's right all now. we have for legislation tonight. We have another one. Yep. Right. Yeah. We do. Oh, we do. Yeah. yeah we do. The motion to approve County Ordinance Twenty Two Hundred Three. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Patrick, you can't vote on this, unfortunately, because you weren't here for the hearing. So uh, this bill, Jack, you want to read that? Or you? <clears throat> uh, this County Ordinance 2203, an act concerning the repeal of Section 181-66 of the Code of Public Laws of Queen Anne's County for the purpose of repealing Section 181-66 on the Code of Public Laws, eliminating any conflict between Section 18166 and provisions of the State Forest Conservation Act and the state and local critical area laws and the general and and generally eliminating the re regulation of woodlands in section 8166 from the Queen Anne's County Zoning Code. By repealing this section of the Code of Public Laws of Queen Anne's County so that again what it's saying is right now the, the code as it's written we are more restrictive than the state by repealing this, it puts we us follow state. Correct. correct. That's right. We follow the state. state. Yeah. Correct. And that's what it's at. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Patrick, you can't vote on this. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Four zero. Oh. Very good. Okay. All right. Next. Okay, moving on, commissioners, we have uh, under tab two, we have the Department of Public Works. They've got several items here. So again, if you want to flip to tab number two. Uh, first up, we have the um, 4-H Park Stormwater Repairs Contract Award. So, um, can we get a motion on that and we can have discussion? God, yeah, I'll make a motion. Just got to find it. Hold on. At yeah, tab two, um, item one. This is the 4-H one. Yeah. This is 4-H Park oh, Stormwater is. Repairs Never Contract mind. Award. I move forward to Queen Anne's County 4-H Park Stormwater Repairs Contract to Martin's Excavation Hauling LLC of Centerville, Maryland, in the amount of $638,000, and authorize Director of Public Works to issue the notice of award and execute the contract on behalf of the county commissioners. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Why don't we yes. let you guys fill in the public on what's going on here? Because I, I think this it's is been great. Process, so yeah, it's probably, it's yeah. been a process. It's been a process, but it's, we're moving in the right direction. It's great. It would be my pleasure to do so, and, and I would like to acknowledge that uh, also uh, in the gallery today is uh, Faith Rossing, uh, Brian Clark, and uh, Jastrom, who are representing the 4-H Park. And uh, it's an exciting project because the park is – from my understanding, been, uh, been involved since the 1940s, and a lot of the infrastructure dates back to the 1950s and 60s. And for those of us that uh, enjoy going to the park every August and some other times, uh, we're well aware of the age of some of the facilities and you know the drainage on site is an issue. Uh, a couple of years ago, and I know Commissioner Wilson, you were involved with this, uh, it sought some funding to uh, incorporate some improvements to the park. Um, there is a uh, rural investment grant, uh, which has been awarded in the amount of $1.2 million from the Upper Soar Regional Council. Uh, that $1.2 million is intended to address uh, seven main areas of improvement for the park, including uh, improvements to the buildings, Wi-Fi, security, uh, water improvements, electric, 
drainage and stormwater management, and paving. So uh, it's a two-year grant, which generally is going to close by December of next year. So there's a little over a year left to complete this work. In addition to the $1.2 million grant, uh, commissioners, you have uh, uh, provided for half a million dollars in FY24 funding, as well as I believe there's some funding program for FY25 as well. Uh, what you have here before you this evening is kind of the first phase of the major work. Some of some of smaller tasks like Wi-Fi and everything has already been completed. What this work does is it accomplishes the drainage and stormwater management repairs to the property as well as new paving. So uh, we had uh, followed normal procurement procedures, put this out to bid. We we're very pleased to have received bids from um, uh, seven contractors on this and the uh, low bidder is uh, Martin's Excavation and Hauling. Uh, he's a, a local contractor, one that uh, uh, the county has worked with before, Public Works. We've worked with them for uh, a while now on some stormwater management projects that uh, he was <coughs> competitively bid. Uh, this project, as you can see, we have a very uh, uh, competitive price at $638,238.10. He indicates that ultimately owing to some of the specialized equipment he has, his overhead, and uh, just his uh, experience with working with this, he's very comfortable with his price and excited to proceed. So uh, provide you award this this evening. We're looking forward to uh, issuing notice of award this week and hope for the work to proceed in early December. And if weather cooperates, uh, he could be done uh, by mid to late spring. So we, the 1.2 from the grant, are we able to use the rest of that money for towards projects there? Yes. So and that's a big bonus. Yep. And in addition to the, the, the capital project funding from commissioners, this grant, the 4-H Park also has some operating funds, I believe in the range of about $100,000 or more that will be going to this as well. Um, I describe it as different colors of money, if you will. Uh, ultimately, it's a little over $2 million to fund this. Um, some of the work, it's my understanding that the way it's going to be coordinated is that some of the things, for instance, the buildings coming up, those are more visible improvements and the idea that they're going to try to have some of that go toward the grant because it's above ground, people recognize it and all that. I believe that the idea is that the half million dollars of FY24 county funding plus some of that grant would pay for this stormwater management project because most of it's underground. You don't see it. Uh, you'll notice it when drainage is, is we better. We get storms like we did this year. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That, yeah. And some new asphalt. But so it's going to be some of this will come out of the grant funds, but I believe that the, the 4-H Park is looking to, in coordination with our uh, – uh, economic uh, and tourism director is working to save some of the more exciting visual improvements for for the grant funding. Stormwater was the big unknown. Yeah, 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 I mean that was the one. That came in. That way. I was sat in that meeting where there was doom and gloom on what it was going to cost, and this is a welcome was a welcome surprise to see what that number was. Mm -hmm. Believe me. So based on how old some of that stuff was and that original map of, I'm not even sure if there's a pipe here, and it's just like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but. Very good. Yep. Okay. Well, we have a, a, a motion to move forward, um, excuse me, to award the Queen Anne's County 4-H Park Stormwater Repairs Contract to Martin's Excavation and Hauling LLC of Centerville, Maryland, in the amount of $638,238.10, and authorize the Director of Public Works to issue the notice of award and execute the contract on behalf of the county commissioners. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. Right Thank so you. we're going to have the best fairgrounds on the eastern shore. We already do. They're only going to be better. There you go. <laughs> Good we have the most populated for sure, but now we'll have the ones that are in the best shape, too. Uh, which means it'll be time to bring back that Delmarva kitchen. Chicken. Chicken. Yeah, that's right. Get back. Thank you, Commissioner. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for all your work on, Lee. Absolutely. All right, commissioners, uh, our next item is uh, for the Roads Board. So if you want to convene as the Roads Board, this is um, a motion that we convene as the Roads Board. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There Aye. we go. All right. Uh, this is a request for a public hearing for Maryland Road. This is one of the uh, 
remaining roads in the community of Kent Island Estates that needs to be uh, upgraded to or is proposed to be upgraded to county standards. Um, this has been uh, in the works for um, probably this, this is the second go around for this particular project. And uh, I'll let Shane explain a little bit more about this. And I think uh, let me get a motion first. Yeah, go get a motion. Sure. I move to schedule the proposed Maryland Road Improvements Project public hearing on. Um, we would suggest like, at least sometime in January. We don't have to pick so a date, but in we, January of 2024. Motion is second. Discussion. You had to Fire away, Shane. Kind of this is one of our private to public road upgrade projects. Uh, uh, the citizens of uh, Maryland Road, um, we looked for a petition from them with help, assistance from the Canal Estates Roads Association. Um, we had a majority in favor of having a public meeting, which we had on October 25th. Um, there are tallies in your memo of the attendees and the votes um, on the project, but the overall basis of the project is to upgrade the road to county standards. Um, it's approximately a $525,000 estimated project. One of our larger projects is this is one of the larger Canon Estates roads left that's still private. Um, the improvements, um, and we've talked about this before through these um, meetings and hearings, is to bring the road up to a 20-foot tar and chip surface with the 40-foot wide right away. Um, we had 20 uh, property owners, we actually had 21 property owners attend, of which 18 voted nine for nine against based on the information presented and the cost and the 20 year assessment cost to pay that loan back. Um, um, with the help of Mr. Dick Sells, who was here tonight and the Ken Island Road Association, they worked to get farther interest from the community that did not attend um, from Maryland Road. And the final numbers here on your memo do not accurately reflect the final count. We still had people voting over the weekend or at least calling or emailing notifying us how they want to vote. And we ended up with 18 opposed and 15 in favor of having a public hearing. Um, we still request to move forward with a public hearing um, and present that uh, to the citizens that are um, you know, want to come out and hear it and actually give their testimony. And I did include in the packet the emails that we had received at the time so you could see the concerns of the citizens that are there. Uh, most of it came down to cost. Cost. cost um, uh, older people with fixed incomes, some disabilities, people that can't work. Um, costs associated with the project plus the cost associated with skiing combining the two. And we have done everything we can to mitigate that by going to the 20 year assessment program to give them the most time to pay it back and reduce that cost as far down as we can. Um, for this one, it's about- Is there a way for some of those people to just tack a lien on the property for when they sell? I mean, they have, there's gonna be equity in a lot of these properties with all these improvements that are going on. So is there some mechanism for those that have, that really truly like are in fixed incomes and can't do that, where you take that 10 grand, it, it's gonna keep accruing interest, but it tax on onto that property. And you know maybe if they're senior when they pass away and their family goes to sell it, that's when we'll get paid, but interest will continue to accrue on it. Is that a mechanism available for? Have we done that before? It's been done for ski, it's not been done for roads. Yeah. So how many units or how many parcels of property on that road? 46 owners would be part 46 of 46 owners. So uh, I'm, I'm curious because if we don't have a majority that want to have a hearing, but we're going to do the hearing anyways, it sounds like that's not regulatory. That's pretty much, okay, we're just taking your pulse. It's no harm, no foul in a hearing. That's what happened. We have 13 right. owners that have no, no, responded no, at all. But why ask them then? Just have the hearing. Well, that's all. yeah, that, I mean, that's what I'm saying. The hearing. We, we, the, sometimes these projects uh, get initiated by one or two property owners. What we like to see is an overall, uh, at least yeah, some half the people are yeah. having the meeting. Oh, I agree to 100%. Then try to get the momentum building to yeah. have a more majority to come to the hearing. But I guess I guess when when the, at the when they finally vote yet up or down if it's more on the down then it doesn't the project doesn't move forward. It's really it's, to you. it's up to the Us. county commissioners to the, or the okay. roads board right. to make the final decision. Right. Well, that leads me to my next question. And do you have a breakdown on all the roads that we've done and what what the costs are associated to each one of those lot owners? I'm more looking to see if you know if if if, if everybody runs if the road might be longer but there's more people paying for it so. You're still paying. How does it compare? Right. Right. I, I like to compare some of those numbers, and then because I think that's a great idea. What you're talking about, those who can't afford it, and this will be the most expensive per owner that that we've, we've done. done so far. Um, yeah, most of them around seven, four to seven, eight thousand dollars. This one is over over eleven. Right. So, so I guess with that being said, you know, I don't know. I mean, over a hundred thousand to each homeowner. 
11. No, 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. But the lot sizes are pretty much still the same. $1,000. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the problems with Maryland Road is it's very narrow. It's much more narrow than most of the roads we have done. So the ditches are a little closer together. So the, to the major cost in these projects are A, moving the ditches, and then actually um, uh, the, the base, the road base you have to put in. Typically, we do um, we bring in CR6 or a fill material to help get the, through the design, get the road in section. In this case, we've actually it's actually cheaper to do soil cement. We've priced it out both ways, so soil cement would be our preferred method to be the cheapest. They just come in, grind everything up, add well, the cement, and walk nice. away, and, and it's much faster. Yeah, I mean, we'll have the it will be in section. All right, that's it's a little dusty, but it's pretty. It, it's effective. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just, you know, throwing an idea out there. Maybe we help in a way to keep everybody, like you said, in that seven to eight thousand dollar range. And would that make a difference? I mean, for the county, that's fifty one or three thousand. It's one hundred fifty thousand dollars. But I think it's a sorely needed project. And I want to thank Dick back there because he's been championing this thing for years. Absolutely. And uh, I, it looks the roads that are done look outstanding. So can we do, can't we? Uh, we should we should be able to pull some comps and all from some of our. He's got, he's got the data. Got <laughs> no, I'm saying yeah. to the realtor people to see what the appreciation's been on the home to start with. I mean, you should be able to pull that. Yeah. And I'm no, sure it's yeah, considerable. Yeah. And the other problem that they have, it, I think some of the, the homeowners aren't realizing how little money that the Roads Association has to keep those roads up. So, you know, if they pass up like another nothing, opportunity, right? they can't rely on the county. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A it's little nothing. bit, but they can't rely on the county fixing the road for them. It's their it's their road, right? And it will really deteriorate. And they're going to be calling us saying, you know, I'm hitting potholes everywhere. If I'm not it's mistaken, a dick can nod his head yes or no. That's one of the worst roads up there in terms of potholes, isn't it, Maryland? If I'm not mistaken, it's got some big ones. You can lose a VW in some of them. Oh, yeah, come on up for a second. I guess, you know, you know Shane, we could have that information at, at the hearing. You know about for, what, yeah. what each roadway, what each road project is cost, you know, per homeowner, and then you know we can. And that decide information, that. we can provide know, that to you next we week. Yeah. That information, and the, and 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 I've we've all attended your presentations. They're good presentations. Yeah. It's very clear on on the improvements, mm -hmm. you know, to the road that you might get some folks that are on the fence, you know, swinging yeah. in the direction of, of voting in favor of of the road improvement. I mean, it couldn't hurt. No, not keep in mind, commissioners. It's really, it's really the board's. And excuse, excuse me. It's really the board's decision whether to move the project forward or not. I mean, it's not okay. really a, you know, a, a, know a popularity contest with the homeowners. Yeah, but we, we really haven't done it. Do you want the buy -in? I mean, it helps we, to have the buy -in. There have been some that have been um, not, 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 not in, in favor. The will of the people. Right. Bay, Bay City <laughs> was one like of those. When we okay. did Bay City roads, we did three and a half miles at one crack, and it was, it was a very, very pretentious uh, public hearing, and the folks were screaming at the board at that time not to do it okay. not but, now but like, it got done it got done yeah. it got done it got done so we have a lot of data a lot of comps we'll, we'll assemble all that and get it to you Perfect. just for, yeah. for background but it is it is the the roads boards county commissioner's decision whether to move this forward or not i mean we we so, do like to get consensus and, so after and, maryland avenue how many are, how, how far along are we down there is it 50 percent or is it that's over 50 percent but I, I don't know the number of or the length of mileage left after that but there's a few key in the pipeline that we've been talking about working on next um, that are and when it comes down to when you say cost per owner some roads are just more favorable to be upgraded they're already in section it doesn't take much maryland is not maryland needs a lot of work and this came through in 2007 we were here basically doing the exact same thing and got to this point of a public hearing and that was uh decided to table because there wasn't enough people in favor of moving forward I think the decision of the board was not to move forward, but there was not a, lot, a very a, a high number of people didn't show up in favor of the project at that hearing. Maryland, uh, Maryland, is it is it one of those roads that's an artery? Would you say a lot of the different the rest of the development uses that road? Do you in no. and out? No, I wouldn't no, say that. Right, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, I, that's what I was saying, Dick. That's one of the worst ones for potholes, if I'm remembering right. <clears throat> Maryland Avenue's got some of the deepest potholes. It's got the deepest potholes, and it's got several layers of, of different. Yeah. Uh, surface, so we've got one of the worst ones up there. We've got oyster Far shells, we've got, right? Um, asphalt in some places, and when they pothole, they just pop right back up. And if if we had equipment um, and uh, methods to do it a little different, we would. But uh, it was Shane, a Shane commented, our annual budget is twenty thousand dollars. 
But so, but in a, so basically, in a nutshell, like the other projects down there, in order for the county to take this over and maintain it as a county road, we have to make improvements to that road. Mm -hmm. And, and that's this, this particular stretch of road, we've had some more resistance from the homeowners than we've had in the past. Yes. Okay. Most of it is economic. When, when you look at the numbers, the, the other roads that we've done so far, um, back into the 2007 period, the, the, uh, the annual uh, number for the, the uh, homeowner was, was between 4,000 and 7,000, somewhere in there. Oh, right. And I think right. that's about where we are, uh, Shane, with, with the current ones, with, with the Worcester and, uh, yeah. and Elm. I, I think we're in the five yeah. to 6,000. So we're right around there, yeah. Per, per owner. In this case, it's 11,000 because of the complexity. This is our longest road, our narrowest road. Our, it is the road that when we started three years ago tomorrow with this project, we wanted to put Maryland first because it was our priority project. School buses won't go down it. Um, the emergency vehicles are, have difficulty. Uh -huh. And it's so, so, so our school buses won't go down Maryland now? They typically won't go down private roads. Oh, they won't go down private roads. They'll go down roads. private, yes. Okay. I got you. Huh. Very good. Okay. Good. So, you know, we were, uh, I guess the, uh, the motion was to move to schedule the proposed Maryland Road Improvement Project public hearing. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So move. Great job. Great job. Thanks, Dick. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to take a couple minutes here. When we started this project, we opened our, our um, offering to nine of our roads to step up if they wanted to participate. Um, we, we thought we could knock out half of those in a couple of years, and then COVID knocked out the, the uh, construction crews of the chain and Ellen have to deal with. So it's really gotten delayed, and that has contributed to some of the splits that we have right now. And the, the work that, that, that Shane has done and, and that the system has come up with, with the uh, soil cement uh, process is, is extremely helpful in terms of time and, and the cost, or as I understand it, it would be a good bit more for the traditional methods. At any rate, I just want to, to uh, recognize the work that Shane and Alan have done with us to get us this far. We've, we've gotten one road, uh, Worcester, which is virtually complete. We've got one more um, layer of char and, trip, char and chip in the spring. We've got the, the next longest road is Elm Road. And Shane told me yesterday that, that that's tar and chipped and ready to sit through the winter, I guess, until the, the spring roll. We've got the com most complicated one is Beach Road, and you'll hear more about that. Uh, it is a very potentially at risk situation because it's on the eastern, uh, it's, it's on the main bay, and, and there's a uh, Erosion, the floods? Erosion is right along the water. Yeah. Yeah. water yeah. 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 Erosion and so, uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear more about that. But uh, thankfully, we were able to um, benefit from the county being willing to, to pay for our uh, the design portion of that uh, particular road. And that will go a long ways to get the right kind of a method in there and hopefully um, stifle the, the erosion of that section because if we do not get that road repaired, there will be another island and it will be Beach Road leading over to uh, Price's Creek. 
and there's no road from Price's Creek to to, 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 to Bay Drive. What will we call that? We'll, we'll call, have to come up with a new name so, for the island. Anyway, yeah. Appreciate these two gentlemen and all the work that they've done to help us get this far. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Okay, commissioners, our next item is for the Sanitary Commission. So if you want to convene as Sanitary Commission. Make a motion to convene as the Sanitary Commission. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Commissioners, this is uh, Jamal's Kent LLC, trading as the Kent Island Shopping Center, request for water allocation from the new uh, water main extension down to the, uh, Kent Island, the old Kent Island Shopping Center. Move Commission. that we grant 5,752 gallons per day of water allocation to Jamal's Kent LLC for their existing shopping center at a cost of $123,721, for which a 10% non-refundable deposit will be required within 30 calendar days. Second. We have a motion and a second. This is the, the first mm -hmm. Jim well, Murray and Waterline already producing. How about that, guys? Yep. Yeah. I mean, Azor, Azor's apartments and Dinonato's apartments have already got allocation. Oh, wow. If you recall. So, yeah. Oh, and now. Pretty good. How many, uh, so if this is 10%, do they already have 10%? Or is this, Sorry? The, is this the initial, or do they already have 10%? No, the 123 is a total cost. They have to place a $12,000 deposit to hold it. All deposits are lost after a year unless you pay more and they give you, buy you another year. Uh, but you can't sit on allocation. Any other discussion? What's that? You used to be able to. Yeah, you yeah. used to be able to. <laughs> For years. <laughs> all right. Well, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Here we go. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. That's all we had for DPW, I believe, unless you had any other questions for them while they're here. All right. No, but thank you for that report on SKI. Yeah. So, it's getting there. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, we can move into our uh, new business items, our action items. We have uh, about a dozen of those for this evening. So if you want to flip to tab number three, tab three, item one. Pages 1 through 37, we have a memorandum from Mike Clark. This is the Community Partnership Agreement for fiscal year 24. And this is um, the agreement between the State of Maryland Children's Cabinet and the Queen Anne's County Partnership for Children, Families, Local Management Board that provides the uh, overall partnership uh, to develop the comprehensive integrated Children and Family Interagency Service Delivery System to that is community-based, family-focused, and culturally competent. So this needs to be uh, signed by the President. So getting a motion. By 2024. I, you got it? No. Oh, go ahead. I didn't know you started. I got it. No, go ahead. I mean, go ahead. You look like you're standing up to do it authoritarily. Go ahead. Right. You're making a point. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're on a roll. Thank you. Oh. No, go ahead. Moved. Yeah. I move that President Moran sign the attached FY 2024 Community Partnership Agreement. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And so moved 5 0 margin. All right. Great job, Mike. Thank you for being here. Item number two on pages uh, 38 through 50. This is the Maryland Transit Administration MTA Capital Grant Agreement. This is the uh, annual MTA capital grant agreement packet for FY24. And signing this Lady. agreement informs MDTA, MT, MTA that Queen Anne's County accepts the federal and state funding to support transit services uh, for our county ride program here in Queen Anne's County. I move to accept the Maryland Transit Administration capital grant agreement packet to certify that Queen Anne's County Department of Community Service Area Aging. What? <laughs> Doing it too fast for you? No. Listen, you're in the game. I'm trying to get it going, yeah. Go over. On aging, we'll operate the public transit system and accept the awards as offered by the State of Maryland Transporta Department of Transportation for FY 2024. Jacket puts him in the game. This is your thing. This going game. too fast for you, though. <laughs> I'm trying to get you guys out of here at 7 o'clock. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Five vote margin. Hey, you, right. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll run out of time before we get to you know who. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so he's at the end of the list now. That's right. <laughs> Uh, he took a nap before he got here. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, item number three on pages 51 through 64. This is the uh, operating grant agreement for the uh, MTA uh, services for Queen Anne's County. This is the same packet. The first one we just did, uh, this capital, this is for the operating grant agreement for the Queen Anne's County uh, RIDE program. I move to accept the Maryland Transit Administration operating grant agreement packet to certify the Queen Anne's County Department of Community Services Area and Aging uh, agency on Aging will operate the public transit system and accept the awards as offered by the State of Maryland Department of Transportation for FY 2024. A second? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? My jacket's really paying off. Next. I know. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Saying 5-0. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, item number four uh, from... Um, Director uh, Steve Chanley, actually it's from Mike Watson, Chief of Operations via uh, Stephen Chanley, things. is uh, a request to purchase a Ventrac ballpark groomer from JR Sheds and Equipment uh, utilizing the source well contract uh, for an amount of $53,286. So I think the first question to ask right away, since we have Jeff here, is can we afford this? <laughs> you think he has a thumbs up over there. <laughs> he well, says, I'm the he said, I'm taking the fifth. <laughs> well, the second question would be, but do we really want to give him one of these? Well, so my interest was piqued when I read the word ballpark. What exactly is this piece of equipment going to do? Motion. I move to authorize the Department of Parks and Recreation yes. to purchase one Ventrac <laughs> ballpark groomer from JR, JR Sheds and Equipment Incorporated of Churchville, Maryland, in the amount of $53,286. Second. What's this machine do? If you look on the second page, you see a picture of it. Machine names are different than the tasks that they actually do. It's actually a multifunctional uh, piece of equipment. Not only can it do the um, the ball field grooming, but you can also attach plows and blowers and mowers and um, a lot of other attachments that go with it. So what we're trying to do is get out of single use machinery. Right. Baseball Zamboni. It, yeah, it's a baseball <laughs> Zamboni. Yeah. 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 And they let the umpires, you know, between mm -hmm. games. Driving. Right. How many um, how many ball fields do we have in the county? Baseball diamonds Ooh, in the county that we take question. care of. Well, we do all the high schools. Yeah. Well, we do all the school ball fields <clears throat> plus ours. I think it's there's a lot. Wait a minute. You said all the high schools. <laughs> what high schools? I'm sorry. This <laughs> <laughs> job's a lot harder than it is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's where I'm Still at. all. <laughs> Still all of them. All oh, of them. Yeah. North true. and at the true. South, all of them. Yeah, all of them. You had to know this wasn't going to be easy. All, <laughs> all the way from Ken Allen Centerville. All two of them. All two of them. All right. It's probably at least 50. That's a probably conservative estimate. 50 balls or 50? I'll tell you what. We, we have folks that come and travel to our fields, and, and I have parents that tell me that we have some of the best baseball diamonds that those kids play on. The best Without parts. a doubt. Yep. I know. All righty. Well, let's call the vote on that bad boy, the, the groomer. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0 again, Margie. We'll see. Right. We Thank you, Commissioners. To keep one of these from them. So. All right. Next up, we have item number five on page 69 through 71. This is a request to purchase a brush chipper, Vermeer brush chipper, um, off of the um, source well contract for $49,544.27. And funding is available in the capital equipment account. For so we'll use this on our cross island trails when trees fall and all that kind of stuff. Anywhere and everywhere. We have one at all? Park? We have one now, and I think it's a 2005 or three. We're still going to keep that one. We're going to move that one up to Congress um, mm -hmm. just because of the. And 
also in, in any type of emergency, hurricane or snow, then perhaps. Motion, yeah. I move to authorize the Department of Parks and Recreation to purchase one brush chipper from Vermeer of Annapolis, Maryland for $49,544.27. We have a motion and a second. You know what? You need to borrow his I know. Jacket. What we did is we, we have to make a motion <laughs> first. <laughs> is to make the motion first and mm -hmm. then ask questions. But that's all right because. Thank you for buying one-year-old equipment. Or two-year-old equipment. Okay, I appreciate that. For free. Well, anyways. I'll for the vote. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Chipper. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Fuck the vote. Count the trees. Hey, by the, by the way, <laughs> hey, by the way, that thing you and I were working on, have we found it yet? That was never kept by us. Hold on. You need, oh, you need to stay here. Because we are going to talk about something. So it was it was never kept, from what I understand. It was returned after the it was more than. I'm say honestly, it was more than five years ago because that's how long I've been here. Someone has to respond to him. Before him. Okay. All right. We'll work it out. Marjorie, we're going to add something here. So I made sure they put you on the emails about the Veterans Point, and I want to bring the commissioners up to speed on it. Uh, there's a uh, Mr. Foster uh, has a client who's passed away that wants to do something for veterans. So they've got some funds that they want to use and pay for. And at uh, Bridges Restaurant out there on the point where that island is in the middle, it looks like a, a jungle. They want to take all that out, put in some granite benches around it, and a 50-foot flagpole, and call it Veterans Point at Wells Cove. And huh. what is it right now, like a rain garden or whatever that we uh, plant things around? It's, no. Again, it's just right. It, it's not costing the county any money, mm -hmm. but I still want you know I'd like to get a vote to see you guys support it because it's you know it's it's our property. Yeah, it's our, it's our property, but it's like I said, it's it's just a way to acknowledge to the veterans. I mean, they're going to have it uplit. They're going to have uh, lettering on on the granite. Uh, I mean, it's really nice that it was, a design was made, but I just wanted to make sure that. Everybody here is good with it because they're moving forward with it, and, and uh, you know, I just. So, do we need a motion, or it's uh, uh, it's open to the public? Yes. You yes. don't have to eat there to get no. to it. No. No. Yep. Yeah. It's a land, it's a public landing. Yeah. Um, so people are there fishing off of it. They're sitting mm -hmm. there. They go mm -hmm. either um, <clears throat> the jetty or the Bri or Bridges Restaurant. Um, they come down for lunch. You know. It's the most populated fishing location we have in Queen Anne's County because. On the weekends, they are there in, in masses. So they'll be now, using the benches. Um, so it goes in, and then obviously we're maintaining it yeah. from that day forward. Yeah. Not a lot of big maintenance There's there. really no maintenance. Okay. Yeah. Right. A new flag every once in a while. And actually, they'll donate that because VAMSA will, will take care of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so. All right. So someone make a motion. Yeah. Well, we don't, we don't need one. There's no actionable yeah. item. So right. Yeah, I just want to make everybody's aware and everybody's good with it. So that's good. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're clamoring to get it done. Census works. I think the flag's coming very soon and they want to get a permit and I guess we need to figure out how we do that. So but as long as you guys are good with it yep. we'll we'll work on that. So thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Director Chamley. Well done. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Director. I'll call you. <laughs> okay. Our next item is uh from Dr. C at Polar. This is item number six on page seventy two. The Department of Health is requesting to award uh, the bid of mental health consultant for the Healthy Families Program for the remaining uh, this year, this fiscal year, with an option to renew for five additional years individually to inspire consulting at an hourly rate of $79.89 and Chester River Behavioral Health with an hourly rate of $125. And they do have funds available and uh, the federal Subsidy also su supplies funding for this program. I move to authorize the Queen Anne's County Department of Health to award the bid of mental health consultant for the Healthy Families Program for the remaining fiscal year with the option to renew for an additional five successive years to Inspire Consulting LLC with an hourly rate of $79.89 and Chester River Behavioral Health LLC with an hourly rate of $125. 
A motion to second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just want to point out this is just a yearly thing. Even though it says option for five, it's it'll right. just come to us yearly. That's yeah. right. That's yep. right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Seeing no other discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 5-0. All right, thank you, commissioners. Uh, item number seven on page uh, 74. This is the Wreaths Across America sponsorship uh, request for contribution for this year. Um, last year, we su uh, supported this initiative with a $5,000 um, donation. Uh, this is for the Eastern Shore Veterans Cemetery in uh, Hurlock, Maryland. Yeah, just thinking that. To... Six, seven. Okay. I move to sponsor the 2023 Reese Across America in the amount of $7,000. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 7000 margin. Thank you very much. Got it. Thank you, Commissioners. Item number eight on page 77. This is um, um, the early voting center request uh, from the Board of Elections for the, to use the Kent Island Fire Department as an optional early voting <coughs> center for uh, upcoming uh, this coming election and for all future upcoming elections and future elections as well. But this is uh, an initiative to comply with the local and state law. The county officials must approve the optional voting center for early voting activities. We did this last year, but we didn't have the piece in here about future elections, so we need to include that if you want to continue using it. And it's been a popular location for early vote. Move to continue the utilization of Kent Island Fire Department as an optional early voting center for the upcoming election as well as all future elections. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like them to move the ballot box. I'm serious. That's not you. To the other sidewalk. Do that. All those in favor. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jack, Jack, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. She made a we stand in a puddle. I know you wanted to be commissioner so you could do that, but you can't puddle. do it. Chris, just, Chris can't have a helicopter. You can't move the ballot box. That's right. There you go. Well, besides, your early, <laughs> your early voting is going to be mail-in ballot anyway, so we're, we're going we're gonna to take care of that. Okay, so... We have a motion to move to continue to utilize Kent Island Fire Department as an option, as an optional early voting center for the upcoming election as well as for all future elections. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, item number nine on page 79. This is um, a request. Our second, your second meeting in December falls on December 26th. Which I think is a brilliant time to be yeah, meeting. Good. We certainly can. Show all of our gifts and toys that we got for yes. Christmas. It'd be yeah. perfect. Whoa, Share whoa, our pictures. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. There's, there's an underlying thing to this. You get cold? Don't you understand what the December 26th is? I know what it is. Tell them, Margie. It's your birthday. That's right. <laughs> 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 we don't have meetings. All the birthday. more reason yeah. to celebrate that day. Exactly. Or have, and a, have meeting a meeting. Have a meeting. You can blow oh, up okay. Before. You can modify the motion if you want and just say no meetings on Commission Marine's birthday. I move to endorse. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I move to cancel the de December 26, 2023 County Commissioner's meeting due to the fact that it's Christmas and Jim's birthday. Boom. I'll second that. <laughs> I think he all those in favor? Can he second it? I think I he's got to abstain. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? And now it'll be in the annals of the county for us. Yeah, that's right. It's in the minutes. Right. There you go. I'm glad you pronounced that correctly. <laughs> yeah, that could have got off the rails, couldn't it? Oh, well. All right. Very well done. <sighs> Item number 10 on page 80 is uh, the Worcester County Commissioners are once again seeking uh, our support for enabling enabling legislation from the uh, Maryland legislature to authorize Eastern Shore Code Home Rule counties the authority to increase the hotel room tax from 5% up to a maximum of 6%. Well, you need a motion? Oh, yeah. Okay. I move to execute the letter of so support exciting. to the Worcester County. He just read it so well. It sounded good. <laughs> County government for enabling legislation granting Eastern Shore Code Home Rule Counties the authority to increase the hotel room tax from 5% to a maximum of 6%. Chris seconded. There we go. So we have a motion and a second, but we have a desktop. 
That's the that's the uh, that's the, the that's, new verbiage. Yeah, that's that they, that one. So right. We don't have the five to six in there. Just right. Okay. So just for clarification. So and it, and again, the key word in there is enabling. Yeah, that's exactly right. So right. it's so all they, they need the other home rule counties to agree to this. Right. And so then it goes to general assembly, and if passed, each of the home rule counties have the option to increase it or not. Which we're, we're not, not we're not no, voting we to not increase taxes. We're just right. helping our. Friends but by doing out. this, they it it they will increase theirs. Yes. If the general assembly says so. So, so yeah. just to give the quick genesis of this, because we just had this conversation last week when mm -hmm. we were there. That, so Worcester County, the their their hotel tax is designated designated for education spending. Okay, to meet future Kerwin requirements, that's the only place they can go get money. So we're just helping them get to that position that they're going to need here in two years. So. Um, What's ours does it? But we ours goes general fund, but um, theirs is that they actually have because they have a convention center that they have a provision. They're the only county in the state that can actually use it directly for that. And so all the whole five or six. Percent. It's I, it's not all of it, but it's the majority of it. That's, uh, that's why they are one of the highest per yeah, pupil spending buildings. in the in the state because yeah. they generate a lot of hotel tax. And from those of us who visit, well, all of those count, all, all Eastern Shore counties got in with us on the resolution for the, you know, for the New Bay Bridge. So, I mean, this is enabling. We don't, have, we're not going to do it, but if they want to do it, so be it. And I, because honestly, I, and honestly, and I was going to say something about this because it, I've gotten a discussion about tipping lately and about how, what, why you should tip, t don't do percentage, do dollars. And this kind of falls in that line because mm -hmm. if you because if you're a restaurant and you raise the price of your meal right, you, right. And, and you do percentage you've now basically raised the tip amount right well it's very similar to this if the hotel owner wants to raise his rate so he puts more money in his pocket we as the county shouldn't be saying okay you could do that but we're going to take more out of your pocket you know what I mean so this keeps it in the hotel owner's pocket just like it does into the waitress or waiter's pocket uh, on the tipping side when they raise the price of food. So. so, let's vote on that. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. It almost made it through last year. We wouldn't even have to be voting on it because it was 11th hour. It got dumped. So, politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, commissioners, thank you very much. Uh, item number 11, uh, page 82, is budget amendment CC61, fire impact fees. Um, the county code, uh, as you know, states that the county reimburses half um, and 25 percent. Well, they provide discounts of 50 percent and 25 percent for the commercial property impact fees, um, respectively, within the growth area and outside of the growth area. So this amendment um, provides budget authority for fiscal year 23 to transfer out of the general fund into the fire impact fee funds for these discounts. So we, we cover that extra piece of that for the for the uh, discounts for the commercial uh, properties. So I'm going to approve budget amendment CC61, fire impact fees, and provide documentation to the volunteer firefighters of Second. such transactions. Oh, we, we have. We have. Okay. We've I'm, done that. I'm, I just wanted to put it in motion oh, anyway, since sure. impact okay. fees. Make sure they know that we're well, doing it. It's in Excel. <clears throat> yeah. So we have the motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? 5-0. And Jeff, thank you for you and all your staff for doing that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for just one. Was it? Well, that's was a big it. one. Thank you, Jeff. Just quite a few dollars of that one. <laughs> that's right. Okay, uh, and we have one desk item, and this is the um, uh, for the Queen Anne's County Christmas Angels. We have a flyer here um, requesting or regarding the Queen Anne's County Christmas Angels program. It's a 501c3 organization managed by Queen Anne's Advocates for Youth, and they are currently still seeking donations to provide Christmas <laughs> gifts, clothing, toys, hygiene kits, blankets, and pillows for children in need. They have about 175 kids that um, have not been sponsored yet, and they are seeking uh, some support from the county. I just um, This is um, an organization and a group, obviously, that's trying to make sure that we have some less fortunate kids in our community who will not have a Christmas at all um, <clears throat> if it wasn't for this Christmas Angels program and other programs here in our community. Um, 
So I will make a motion that the commissioners pledge a $10,000 donation to the Christmas Angels. Second. Period. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Done. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. That is all of the action items for this evening, Commissioner. That we had, so we can go to oh. press and public comment. Do we receive any uh, <coughs> emails? Comments? All right. We're going to round table. Jack, you're up. I like that kind of well, thing. Well, wait a minute. Is it Thanksgiving now? I don't have to. We'll have one more before. Yeah, no, actually, happy, happy, Thanksgiving happy, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thanksgiving. That's right. Yeah. 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 I just got to watch those dates because you can miss them. But yeah, <laughs> you don't have one before this evening. Well, not before Thanksgiving. Not before, huh? No, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's yeah. earlier this year, so yeah. Yeah. they're not using. They're not doing we're it the last started, Thursday. Also Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Well, plus we're three. We were three weeks to get to this meeting. This right. was this is one of those times yeah. in the year. Where it's uh, yeah. actually three weeks to get yeah. to our meeting. So, yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. There you go, Patrick. Anything? Uh, no, but. Does anybody remember this? What that gentleman was talking about? Yeah, yeah, no, no. yeah. We, uh, I'll explain to you. It, it yeah. is um, that that is so. What he was, he wasn't here on this before. What he was talking about that was here before was the ordinance that was brought up that we had had a hearing and never voted on. That's what got voted on. Here, you were. So he, he's trying to build some things, mm -hmm. and he, he's being told by MDE that he no, needs. He's been told, to, told by the county. By the county. By, the, by us. Yes. That Ours is more stringent. Forest. Correct. Ours was more stringent we, than yeah, the Yeah, we state. were more restrictive than the state is. So when you say we, do you mean Queen Anne's County? Queen Anne's County is. No, County. We don't, Queen, you and I, we yeah. were more restrictive because. We're the ones that set as them. As far as the number of acreage, percentage of acreage that you must leave untouched right. in your project based on the total acreage size of your project. It's a law that was passed before the state had their law. Correct. Right? And that, so it, it lingered on our books. Right. So instead, we've had a hearing on it. We're at 60%, and we're going to take it back down to where the state is at 40%. At 40%. Which is a very tough one, and I agree with him, because it is a nursery, and you're growing trees there, and, right. you're, and you're selling trees. So it kind of gets... Well, you, you need the room to... Do all that, if right? You can't, and it doesn't have to be trees. It could be, like he said, sticker Trubs, bushes and whatever, yeah. crap. And you can't, you got to leave it alone. So, we're we're where the state is, and I'm I'm good with that. Yep. So. Oh yes. Is that, or Pat, anything else? Um. Okay. Um. Have? So, you guys are probably well aware of this already, but this is National Apprenticeship Week. Uh, so our high schools, for the first time, are yeah. celebrating this with um, <coughs> different subject matter at both our high schools. Um, today, I attended a school that focused on law enforcement, first responders, and um, the option for military service as um, opportunities for our high school graduating uh, seniors to jump into um, careers in the trades, uh, or law enforcement and who don't necessarily feel like college is a path for them. So um, when they break for lunch, these vendors were all sitting at tables and were answering the kids' questions. So it was, uh, I think it was a great turnout. A lot of kids were very, very interested in speaking to the different representatives today. And so Friday they're doing a different theme. Friday or Thursday? Thursday? Well, so doing I'm, I'm doing it, so yeah. Okay, you're going to be there Thursday. Yeah. Okay, but Friday there's a different thing, which huh. which ha information about Chesapeake College and, and some other programs that are available. But but to my point, it was great to see the kids quickly eat their lunch so they could go out to those tables and participate and ask questions. And um, It's an option for not going to college. Absolutely. So, Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, good. It's good. I'm good too. I don't. I don't have anything really to. You know, we we got Todd back. You know, we, we negotiated. It took us three weeks, but you know, he's back out of the jungle, unscathed. <laughs> he twitches at night when he sleeps, but it's okay. <laughs> he only got caned one time. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a few questions. Who goes to Bali on purpose? <laughs> Bali's great. 
Okay. You've been there? Here's our worldly traveler. Oh, here. It's on my list. It's on his list. It's on yeah. He got that jacket from the Exchange Raiders. Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Were you Ireland last? No, that was England. He, England. You went to he England. Was, you got that jacket. jacket. Class. Yeah, he says, I've had this jacket for years. Wrong. You got it in England your last trip. 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. All right. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.